Hey guys, what is up? Josh Short here from Edit Video Faster, and in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how I set up my bins in Premiere Pro. It doesn't really matter what version of Premiere you're in, of Premiere that you're in. Uh, this is more like a theoretical thing. Um, so um, if you're in 2020, 2019, something in the future, I'm going to assume the next version is 2021. Um, this should hypothetically still work for you. So uh, I have Premiere open, I have my project panel active, and I'm just going to hit that uh, tilde or accent key to bring it full screen. And before I jump into how I label my bins and, ev and everything like that, uh, just so you're aware, if you need to create a new bin, go down here and uh, click this little new bin icon, that'll pop up a new bin. And if you want to delete it, just highlight it hit the delete key or the backspace key. Alternatively, you can uh, right click inside the, an empty space of the bin and select new bin. A new bin's gonna pop, pop up for you. Once again, highlight it, hit delete. Okay, so here's how I have it set up and uh, I have another tutorial for something similar to this in Avid. It's very similar, but uh, over here in Premiere, uh, I start with uh, 01 underscore sequences. Um, so sequences, my most important thing, I'm going to want that at the very top uh, of my uh, project panel. And inside of that, I have three more bins, my master sequences. This is where my final finished product, if it ever actually gets finished and we can label it final, that's where that sequence is going to live. Uh, beneath that, just because it's in alphabetical order, uh, is my nested sequences. So these are the sequences that um, you know get nested inside your other sequences. Uh, I'm going to want to keep those somewhere separate just so I have them labeled and all in one place together. And lastly, I have my working sequences bin, and this is where, you know, uh, when I'm working on a, on a project, on a show, on, on whatever, this is where these sequences, while they're not final yet, uh, this is where they live. When, um, so, you know, 98% of the time when I'm in Premiere, my sequences are going to be in that working sequences uh, bin until I finally get that check mark, hit that final export, then I move it over to master sequences. And I don't worry about it again until, you know, months later, years later, when I got to make a change or something like that, or hopefully never, ever have to go back into this project again. All right, let's jump down to the next bin that is O2 underscore audio. So under here, I have three sub bins, and this, you know, might look different for you, but a lot of the times I'm dealing with voiceover. So I have my bin labeled VO. Uh, I have a bin for music, and I have another bin for sound effects or SFX sound effects abbreviation um, and uh, pretty self-explanatory um, if you know if you have a um, um, audio that isn't necessarily synced with your footage uh, you'll probably have a bin in here uh, with you know those different you know takes or the different uh, you know shoots that uh, you know the crew went on with your different audio bins uh, which I'm gonna get done here in the footage so um, you'll have a, a corresponding bin, at least that's the way I would work. I would have a corresponding bin in my audio um, bins to one of my footage bins. Hold your thoughts. I'm going to get there in a minute. All right, so after O2 underscore audio, we jump into uh, O3 underscore graphics. And then in here, I have my imported graphics bin and my titles bin. My titles bin, those are all the titles from inside of Premiere. Um, I still use the legacy title tool in Premiere. Um, haven't really switched over to the new one yet, so that still creates that little, you know, mini um, title file um, inside of Premiere that you need to house somewhere into a bin. So this is where I keep them. One day we'll switch over to the new title tool, one day. Uh, and then uh, imported graphics, um, you know, lower thirds, you know, whatever I make outside of Premiere, logos, whatever that need to be imported in that I got to put into the sequences. That's where I'm going to store it. If I need to get a little more granular, um, you know, a lot of the times I'm dealing with, you know, map stuff. Uh, so I'll have a whole separate bin of graphics just for the maps. Um, or, you know, if I need a whole bunch of, you know, different backgrounds for people, I'll make a whole separate bin just for backgrounds. But for the most part, if it's something pretty simple, just have one bin, throw all the uh, imported graphics in there. When it's, you know, something manageable, we're talking a dozen, two dozen, you know. Okay, I think that's it for graphics. Uh, moving down to 04 underscore footage. Kind of teased this a minute ago. So um, whatever footage I have from the shoots, uh, uh, generally give it, um, you know, the shoot name. Uh, and then um, after it, uh, I will date it and then give it uh, like a, you know, if it's on a card, I usually shoot off cards. Uh, you know, card number one, card number two, etc. And let me cycle this real quick. 
there we go. No, they're in alphabetical order. Okay, so um, for me, uh, so sample shoot A, um, so this was our first shoot, the A shoot, uh, dash, and then uh, year, year, month, month, day, day. That's how I like to label things. I know I'm kind of in a minority on how I do that. Uh, and then dash 001, there was only one card used that day. Um, next shoot is shoot B, so sample shoot B, dash the date, and then card number one, and then card number two. So that's how that works. So rewinding back to uh, if you had uh, external audio for that shoot. So uh, up here under audio, I would have a whole other bin uh, where it would be, you know, audio sample shoot A, dash 2011, that's how that would work. Uh, and then finally, uh, I have 05 underscore old. And uh, generally, uh, just have an old sequences bin in there. Um, if there's other bins, um, you know, from, you know, just other things that I, I brought in here and that I'm not using, and I just want to do a little bit of organization in here, I don't want to necessarily delete that stuff. Um, I copied it over from another project or, you know, started this whole thing from another project and duplicated it, but I wanted to house those somewhere else. Um, I'm going to put that under 05 underscore old. Uh, and then when I'm working, generally just collapse that and never think about it. Um, and uh, that's about it. Um, you know, sometimes, um, you know, if you want to get a little more detailed and, uh, you know, um, give your, your bins different uh, colors, you can go ahead and do that. Um, traditionally, unless I really need to keep track of something, I don't really work that way. I just kind of leave it all, you know, kind of the, the, the neutral orange or whatever it's, you know, generally set to. I don't really mess with that too much. But, um, yeah, if you do something different, I'm sure you do. Um, doesn't make it doesn't make me wrong. Doesn't make you know you right. Um, it's just another way of working. So uh, if you do something different, I would love to hear it. Please leave your comments below. Um, yeah, hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Uh, I should really learn to wrap this up another way. But anyway, I think that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you around in the next video. All right, bye.